Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Monday, November 16th, and we celebrate the feast days of two different saints, St. Gertrude Virgin and St. Margaret of Scotland. St. Gertrude is sometimes referred to as St. Gertrude the Great, but let us begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who made St. Margaret of Scotland wonderful in her outstanding charity towards the poor. Grant that through her intercession and her example, we may reflect among all humanity the image of your divine goodness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the beginning of the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants what must happen soon. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who gives witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ by reporting what he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud, and blessed are those who listen to this prophetic message and heed what is written in it, for the appointed time is near. John, to the seven churches in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne. I heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write this. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands says this, I know your works, your labor, and your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate the wicked. You have tested those who call themselves apostles but are not, and discovered that they are impostors. Moreover, you have endurance and have suffered for my name, and you have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. Realize how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor the walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on this law day and night. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. He is like a tree planted near running water that leads its fruit, yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff with the wind which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of wicked, the wicked, vanishes. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, 
O Lord. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. People walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He replied, Lord, please let me see. Jesus told him, Have sight. Your faith has saved you. He immediately received his sight and followed him, giving glory to God. When they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Margaret of Scotland. St. Margaret was born in Hungary, not in Scotland, about the year 1046 while her father was in exile there. She was given in marriage to Malcolm III, King of the Scots, bore him eight children, and was an exemplary mother and queen. She died in Edinburgh in 1093. St. Gertrude the Great, Virgin. Gertrude was born in Eiselben in Thuringia in 1256. As a young girl, she was received by the Cistercian nuns of Helfta and devoted herself to study, especially liturgy, literature and philosophy. Once touched by the Spirit of God, Gertrude ran swiftly in the paths of perfection, devoting herself to prayer and contemplation. She died on November 17, 1301. So, St. Margaret of Scotland and St. Gertrude. We hear two great readings today. We hear the one from the very beginning of the book of Revelation, which is kind of a whole launching pad for that entire book. And you can tell it's written to a group of churches. You, you see that in the reading. But I'm going to focus a little more on the gospel today. And I'm always touched by this. There are two versions of this story of the beggar that is uh, at the city gates. In this case, he's on the roadside. In the other version, he's at the city gates. In the other version, we have a name for him, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. But we often see these, these stories of um, Jesus healing people. And, and I want to make a point about this. Is it's easy for us to get hung up on the whole idea of this whole physical healing. You know, you know people often want to try to explain these somehow, to explain miracles. We're always into this whole thing about explaining miracles or how did this happen or how could he have done this and so on and so forth and of course there's a logical answer that he's the son of God but there's a lot more here going on we what we don't see about Bartimaeus and and or not Bartimaeus but in this case a man born blind he's not named here is here is a man who hears Jesus coming do we do that in life do we sometimes hear Jesus coming that's a good question for us, you know, and, and if we don't, why don't we? Um, do we hear him coming at the times of great joy? Do we hear him coming at the times of sadness? Our parish lost a great woman this past week, and that was Vicki Race, um, our administrative assistant, you know, great woman or office manager, whatever title she had. And you have to just love her. And, and, and here's this great woman that has kind of left this, this space for all the rest of us who has left. So, you know, Vicki's presence is still there. It's something we, even though we don't see her, her presence is still very much there. And Bartimaeus sees that too. He sees that in Jesus. He knows the presence. Of course, he hears the commotion that's going on. In the original, uh, the other version, he has his cloak laid out, which is where people drop their money. Well, your cloak would have been your sign of your um, vocation. And this is a thing that I think we sometimes miss in these stories, is that, oh yes, he's blind, you know, it, and so he's cured and isn't that great or so on. But the fact that he's a beggar means also, too, that his only trade is begging. 
yeah, his only trade is begging. So in, by asking to be given sight, and you notice Jesus always, I mean, here's a blind man. Jesus could easily assume, oh, he wants to be seized, see, so slam, bam, you know, you're, you're cured. But no, he asks, what is it that you want? And I think that's an important uh, thing for us to remember. Um, there's a, a very popular TV show right now that's about the devil, the devil, Lucifer. And that's Lucifer's line. Lucifer always says, what is it that you desire? What is it that you want? Now, I'm not equating Jesus and Lucifer, but isn't that an interesting thing? And it seems to us that that, that choice that that person makes is important. Now, again, Jesus could easily say, man's blind, cure him. Man's lame, cure him. You know, but instead he says, what is it that you want? What do you desire? What is it that you need? And he says, I'm going to be sight. I want to see. You know, I want to be healed. And in that doing that, he not only is healed, but he takes on an entire life change. You know, he's no longer a beggar. He can't beg anymore because he's now sighted. So he has to completely reorient his life. And that's the other thing that we miss too, is that, you know, we come to church and, we, you know, we're said, well, give, give your life to Christ. Okay, I gave my life to Christ. But have we made that, that revelatory change? You know, we're reading Revelations today. Have we made that huge change in our life? And does that, when we realize that, that now that we can see spiritually, is that changing us and changing the things that we do in our lives? You know, is that, are we, get, are we now have spiritual sight? Do we see things in a different way? Do we act in a different way? Do we respond in a different way? And that's the answer, my brothers and sisters. We're all asking to be healed. We're all asking to be, you know, more faithful. We're all asking to be more like Christ. But it comes with a cost, and it comes with a big cost. And are we willing to make that difference, make that change, have that revelation in our lives? My brothers and sisters, we're called to be like Bartimaeus. We're called to ask for that revelation. And then, once we have it, to do something with it. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God in, the, in our readings today. So now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, and for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be given the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, and I already mentioned that, so I will keep on going. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, particularly the newly elected ones, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, especially Vicki Race, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the progress of robotics and artificial intelligence may always serve humankind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions, where we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, who prepared a delightful dwelling for yourself in the heart of St. Gertrude, the Virgin, graciously bring light through her intercession to the darkness of our hearts, that we may joyfully experience you and your presence at work within us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great Monday. We're off to a great week. We're headed, oh, Advent soon. Where it happened to 2020? God bless you. Have a good week. See you later.